we have lots of people who are either starting keto or <coughs> have started, but then have hit a brick wall mm. and have struggled a bit. And so, look, the common most, I think the common questions that are asked is, what are the mistakes? What am I doing wrong? Give me some advice. Now, each question usually focuses on an individual thing, but what I thought we'd discuss today is if I said to you, having done this and coached hundreds of people through the keto transition and you continually coach people and help people, if I said what would be the top nine mistakes that people make, let's get a list because I reckon that's a really a really nice way of giving people a really succinct, here's the top nine. So if you just went through and went tick, 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 I'm not doing those, then you're probably 90% there. There's some tweaks, but if you get those top nine right and you avoid those and make sure those mistakes aren't inhibiting your uh, your your results. Yeah, you know, I think it's almost it's almost the reverse is true sometimes as well. And what I find happens a lot is people say to me, I'm doing all the right things. Mm. So I'm, I'm eating right and I'm, <laughs> I'm doing high fat. Yes. I've got rid of the carbohydrates, mm. not having sugary drinks. But I'm still not getting whatever I it, you know whatever I wanted. So let's say they went on to the keto lifestyle because they wanted more energy. I'm not getting more energy, mm. or you know I'm getting these headaches, or I'm feeling fatigued. Mm. Or they say you know I've not I haven't lost any weight yet, um, or you know my clothes are still tight, or I'm, I'm getting bloated. Um, my tummy doesn't feel so good. Yeah. I get a lot of people saying to me I've done it, but I don't feel good, or yeah, I don't yeah. feel what I want, or I don't feel yeah. how people describe it. And yeah. Friends have done it, and mm. they're they're feeling great. Yeah. I'm just not. I'm not sleeping well. I'm yeah. not. I'm not getting all those amazing benefits. Mm. Mm. So, you know... What mistakes am I making? What, what, yeah, what am I doing wrong? <coughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot, a lot of people do at that point, you know, they don't get the benefits. They give it a couple of weeks. Two and weeks, then, long time. Yeah, even, they might even give it a month. You know, they might yeah. take our advice and they might give it the, uh, the 30 days. And they get to 30 days and say, well, look, see, it hasn't worked for me. And mm. then they ditch it. Yes. And, you know, what I would always say to people is at that point in time, if you haven't got the results, if you're not getting where you want to go, talk to somebody, have a look at what you're doing, you know, get some help. Mm. And then for sure, like you said, let's have a look at, you know, what are the top, what is it, nine? I said nine. Nine's a good number. Cool. Three's not enough. There's probably top 100, but all right, I'll stick, to, I'll stick to nine. So I'm going to give you, <laughs> I'm going to give you two or three minutes just to succinctly tell me what are the top nine? So so in this chat, we've got in 20 or 30 minutes, someone can listen to this and if they could go through and say, if I'm okay with these top nine, <clears throat> then I'm likely to get it. Well, let's, let's go through them one by one. Good, go with um, number one. One by one. And these are, in my opinion, yes. these are kind of in order. Good. Number right? one so is? Number one is basically they've got fat phobia. Oof. Is how I would describe it. You've called it fat phobia. Fat phobia. So you know who you are. Mm. If this is you... Um, you've probably, you know, you're probably in your 30s and 40s, maybe in 20s. Yep. You've grown up with the low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. Mm. You've grown up with the American Heart Association guidance and advice, which is reduce your, your fat, increase your carbohydrate. Eat a whole grain diet. Mm. Whole grains, fats are bad. Yes. Right, so we've, we've had fat being demonised for years and years and years, 60, 70 years, and many people have grown up with that myth, fat is bad for you. Yes. Don't eat fat, reduce your fat. And there are people who've been on a journey for 20, 30, 40 years yeah. trying to reduce their fat. And now we are all, we're all of a sudden switching things and saying fat is good, wholesome, healthy fat is good. So yeah. increase your fat. So it's like, <laughs> you know, for them it's like, ah, because what we're saying is not just about taking a different type of food. This is about completely changing their mindset yes. and being able to say, it's okay, fat is not bad. Mm. And for those people, you know, that often they'll put the fat into their meals, but the quantities are tiny. Yeah, yeah. You know, so whereas we might be talking 200 grams or, you know, six ounces a day of, of fats, they're probably having, you know, 30 grams at most, yeah, an yeah. ounce at most. Yeah. So they're way short of yes. where we'd want them to be on the fats. Um, and maybe they're not even eating the right fats. But okay. stick with the first one. The first one is if you're fat phobic, mm. recognize that this is a total mindset shift. Yes. Um, there is lots and lots of research out there. So for anybody who, who is fat phobic, my advice is go and do some research. I don't often say this because I like to keep it simple, but go and look at the studies. There are so many studies out there that talk about how healthy keto is, how safe it is, 
fat is not bad. There are certain types of fat that are bad. I'm going to come on to that. Yeah. Fat in itself is not bad. Fat is good. And you need to lose that fat phobia. And if you're really struggling with it, because a phobia is something we are terrified of. We associate phobias with spiders, yeah. snakes. So people almost shaking as they put their fat in their meal. Yeah. In their skin. All right, so number one. Number one. Number one, fat phobia, the mistakes people make when transitioning to a keto lifestyle. Don't fear the fat. Don't fear the Number two is related. Number two is definitely related. Okay, so one and two, um, very closely linked. Number two is people use the wrong type of fat. Mm, okay. So again, we've been conditioned, we've been conditioned and told that these liquid vegetable oils, like canola oil, sunflower oil, oil safflower, yeah. safflower oil, Food can't, the even, devil. can't even say them, yes. um, you know, these oils that you find in your supermarket in the great big containers, that go into deep fryers and we use in deep fryers mm. and we, we leave them in our deep fryers for long periods of time, we've been told that these are good. You so know, why are they not good? What's bad about they're them? They're not good because, first of all, they're highly refined. Okay. They're not natural. They may have come from a plant. Okay, so when they're, when, because they're highly refined, what makes them bad if they're refined? So all the salt. So okay. they're highly refined. Refined Excited. is bad, full stop. Anything refined is bad. Right. So try to avoid refined. The second thing is they are mainly um, polyunsaturated fats, which yeah. means they're omega-6s. Yes. Now, in our standard diet, um, we have a very, very high proportion of omega-6. And what's happened over the years, and again, this is over tens of thousands of years, the omega-3, which comes from the fish oils, that, be that beautiful, heart healthy um, um, omega-3, has gone out of balance with omega-6. So we want lots of omega-3. We don't need a lot of omega-6, and it comes from many, many sources. Those vegetable oils give us a massive dose. Yeah. So what's happened is our omega-3s have gone down because yeah. we don't have good quality seafood, and our omega-3s have gone up massively. Mm. So in the past, we probably would have had more omega-3 than 6. We've now got 20 times. So omega-6 has much. gone up. Massive amounts of wow. omega-6. Okay. It is bad. It is not heart healthy. So we want to limit omega-6. Right. That is what we get as a pure concentrated form of omega-6 in these vegetable oils. Okay, so the wrong fats is the second tip. So flip the other way, what, what, what are the good fats? Just give us a list. Quick list. <clears throat> Best fats you can go for on the ketogenic lifestyle, avocados and avocado oil. Beautiful, monounsaturated, heart healthy. Olive oil. It's don't cook with it. You can cook with it, but take it in salads. Beautiful. Um, butter, mm. butter and ghee. Awesome dairy fats. Excellent. The very little dairy. And they taste yummy. Yeah, they taste yummy. They're delicious. Um, coconut oil is another great fat. MCT oil is yep. popular on the keto lifestyle. So there's a couple that you can go for. Excellent. So it's one and two. Keep the fat phobia and choosing the right fats. Yep. Number three, still on the food, what you're taking in, more around protein. Tell us all about it. This is a really common mistake as well. Yes. So people have been conditioned to think that protein is good. If you want mm. to build muscle, you need to have protein. So we look at categories of people, bodybuilders, traditionally have taken in high quantities of protein. Um, weight loss diets like the Atkins diet have been fairly high in protein. We've been told um, that if you want to retain your muscle and your collagen and your skin and everything into you know, old age, eat protein. So there are many advocates of high protein diets. Mm. And so typically people will overeat protein, A, because they're told protein is good for you, yes. you need it for your muscles and everything else. Yep. But also because naturally people look at quantities and we eat more than we ever did. We don't, we have these huge plates. If I look at what my grandparents ate, you're absolutely right. My grandparents had tiny little plates, <laughs> these little, yeah. you know, China plates. Yeah, these big wooden boards we and big have plates. These enormous yep. plates. Mm. And then we have side plates too. Mm. So we physically have bigger plates, we fill the plates up, and we're used to junk food, which is huge quantities. Yes. So we are used to having big portions, big meals. So that translates through into, even if people aren't trying to go high protein, just naturally, they're yeah. just putting too much on the plate and they go to restaurants or they get takeaways 
And the protein portions are big because we've be, we've come to expect yes, it. Yes, it's almost like a bit of a recipe. So people talk about going to a restaurant. Oh, that's great! They have really good size servings. Yeah. People have been conditioned to look for restaurants that have a nice hearty meal. So what is the right? So we're talking keto lifestyle. What's the right amount of protein to not make that mistake? Mm. So again, in very simple terms, and you know how I like mm. to keep it simple, Mike. Um, we're looking for about fifteen percent of the mm. of the food as being protein. So if we okay. translate that through, um, if we've got somebody who weighs around um, perhaps 50 um, kilograms, so um, look for them at how much protein they would eat, probably around 40 to 50 grams of protein in a day. Right. And that would be two very small servings of meat. Yes. So if I take, you know, if I take my hand, yep. and then I look at the palm of my hands, and not including the thumb, just that little round bit, that palm there, yeah. that's going to be a typical serving for a small person like me. For the day? For the, so two of those. Two of those for the day. Two of those servings per day. Okay, I've got big palms. You've got big palms, so there you go. Perfect. And you don't come in handy. You're going to go more for like 75 grams of protein. Right. So again, two servings, if you just hold your hand up, um, two servings of that palm size. You can see the difference in size there, yes. which is pretty much corresponding. Your body weight is about 50% more than mine. Yes. So I'm gonna go for about 50 grams of, of uh, protein. You're gonna go Good. for about 75 grams. Good. If you are very, very big, you know, very, very heavy set, you right. might go a little bit bigger, but that is a fairly moderate amount of mm. protein. And the thing that I want to point out is it's not only your meat. So your meat is a very yes, high a concentrated point. source of protein. <coughs> but but if you're adding, proteins. that's right. So if you're adding into that, Nuts and cheese, which are yes. two very typical keto foods. We love nuts and cheese. They both contain protein. Yes. So just watch out for that. And if you're doing things like bone broth, they've all got protein. So you're stacking protein. Yeah, so it's not just so that piece of steak. That's it. It's all got a little bits of protein that make so up the numbers. Typically, in, in a day, I will have my lunch meal, will have maybe cheese and nuts and a tiny bit of meat. And then my evening meal will have my serving because I'll have already got lots of protein from, mm. from other things during the day. Excellent. That's number three. Number four is around the variety of meals and not making the mistake of just going down mm. one particular type of meal. So a lot of people make the mistake when they get into the keto lifestyle, mm. they realise they can eat, you know, the, the fats and they can eat the fatty <laughs> fats of meat. And, and you see it out there, the bacon. Yes, Everybody absolutely. loves yep, bacon. Yep. And so what they do is they think that every meal has to be bacon and eggs. <laughs> every breakfast has to be they bacon do, and they? eggs. Yep, every yep. dinner has Lots to be fat. steak. <laughs> And so, you know, mm. what people do is they eat the same meal every day. Yes. Bacon and eggs for, for breakfast or lunch, and then steak and, and veggies for dinner. And, what, and what's the problem with that? The problem with that is you're not then getting a wide range of foods in order to get a wide range of nutrients. Ah, uh, okay. So the keto lifestyle is not about only eating two or three <laughs> foods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all about eating a wide range of whole foods. Yep so that you can get all your different vitamins, minerals, yep. and nutrients from those foods. All right, so mix it up. Mix it up. Have a look at all those beautiful foods available in the keto lifestyle and yep. choose from those. And listen to some of our episodes around using <laughs> air fryers, <laughs> recipes, watch yes. our demos. Listen, listen, listen. Because yes. even for a non we know <laughs> you can cook yes. and yes. Uh, keto meals are easy. All right, number five, you're in a love. Yes. Because this is one of your favourites, people who use keto as a quick fix weight loss tool. Ah, ah we love those people. This is where I need to... Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. I'm getting married in but seven days, just... so I'm going to go on keto this week to lose weight. People see it as a quick fix. Mm. They think keto is the magic pill and it'll all change overnight. Yes. And you've heard me say it before, <laughs> it is a long journey, it's the long game. Yep. And when you start, you're impatient, you want the results, you want the results fast. And I know, I've been there, you've been there, we all want the results in 30 days. You'll see a, you'll see a difference in 30 days. You could be on this journey for a couple of years and you'll probably be on it for life. Yep. So give yourself time and space. 30 days in your mm. whole lifetime is nothing. Yep. If you're not seeing results in 30 days, Keep going, keep having the patience, keep yes. persisting, you'll get there. Cool. And one that dovetails into that, which is number six, mm. which is that obsession that people have around jumping on the scales, doing the body measurements, counting the macros, doing the numbers, just crunching the numbers, and they're doing it not how they feel, 
but they're making the mistake of just focusing on the numbers when it comes to getting results. So what happens when a lot of people transition into keto is they, they're obsessed with what the scales say. Mm. So forget all the other the numbers, people obsessed with the scales. They do. So if they're sitting on the scales at 110 pounds and they've made it their goal to lose 10 pounds, they will get on the scale every day, maybe two or three times a day, and they will obsess with what the scales tell them. So what will happen is they'll probably lose two to four pounds in the first couple of days and that's just water weight so yes. you know one to two kilos water weight is lost yep. they'll celebrate that success and then they'll obsess from there and if the scales don't move they start to get psychologically quite defeated mm. so they start to say to themselves it's not working it's not happening and that's where we get all these facebook questions i've been on keto for x time and it hasn't worked it hasn't worked or I've, i got results and now it's stopped and that's a real cry out it is where people are saying look i, I just don't know what to do and for those people, what I say is stick with it. Yeah. Because there's a few things that are happening in your first one, two, three months. Yes. The first one is your body's transitioning its fuel source. And that's like a big lever shifting. Absolutely. That takes time and effort. So give your body a bit of a chance because it might just take a bit longer than the people around you to transition. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, it'll happen. Once the lever's gone clunk and fitted in the other side, yep. it will then all start to fall yes. into place. When your body's happy, the weight will just fall off. Secondly, it might be just that your journey is different to other people's. Mm -hmm. said. It may take you a bit longer. Thirdly, you might be losing um, fat, but you're not seeing it on the scales. You may be putting on muscle because you're, you, you know, you're actually exercising. So look for other indicators. How does your skin look? Are your eyes clear? Is your hair nice and shiny? Are you feeling fatigued or are you feeling full of energy? Are you waking up refreshed? Mm. Are your clothes a bit looser <coughs> yes. than they were? Because again, you're actually starting to turn up and lose the yep. fat. Yep. How do you look in the mirror? Can yep. you see you know, the loss? Can you see the inches lost? Yep. Don't obsess with the scales. They yes. don't tell you the full picture. Cool. All right, next mistake is all around hydration. It is. Um, one of the mistakes that people make is they don't hydrate enough when they go keto because they don't understand why. Now, I am not talking about drinking five to ten litres a day <laughs> um, because then you might just overhydrate. But what happens, and we, we have an episode that covers this perfectly, what happens when you get onto the keto lifestyle is your body actually doesn't need to retain as much water because it's not returning glucose. It's not it's not producing as much insulin and because of that your kidneys are signaled to lose water that water loss means you need to replenish it yes so instead of your body holding on to all of its water making you bloated your body says ah i don't need it anymore yes and it just lets it go yeah. therefore you need to hydrate yeah but very very important when you do hydrate because you're losing electrolytes so when you drink your water make sure you're adding electrolytes in and typically salt Yep. So you know the um, the sodium yes. and using pink uh, pink Himalayan salt is the way to go. Don't use yep. table salt. <clears throat> add a bit of that into your meals. Add a bit into your water. Make sure you're hydrating your body through a nice mix of electrolytes and water. Cool. Next one is a little bit off it's off track. It's not directly for the keto lifestyle, mm -hmm. but the big impact of having enough sleep on getting results. So what's the mistake people make? around sleep so there's a few things and this applies very much in the early stages of keto when you're transitioning you're probably going to have some of those keto flu symptoms yes so you're feeling a bit more tired than usual fatigued you might have headaches um, you're just not feeling good and exactly like when you have the real flu um, you like to go to bed and sleep it off mm. it's exactly what you should do when you transition into keto okay go to bed and sleep it off get good sleep because then your body can actually work through the changes yes. that you're making and your body can assimilate the benefits. Longer term, good sleep is also really important because it's when we repair and when you're fully rested, when you've had lots of good sleep and your body's done all of its cellular actions, you know, it's, it's got rid of waste and it's renewed the cells, your body becomes happy and a happy body will lose weight. Yes. A stressed body <clears throat> will not lose Retire. weight. So you can restrict your calories as much as you want, but if you're suffering huge amounts of stress and that's coming through not sleeping enough, then you might find you're actually not losing weight. Mm -hmm. and an extra 30 minutes or an hour of sleep per night might just lose the weight just like that. Excellent. Last one's another favorite of yours. Mistakes people make is around comparing their journey with other people or listening to input from others? 
And everybody does this. They canvas opinion. <laughs> what's the mic? What's happening for you? How's your stomach feeling? Have you got any headaches? Yeah. Have you lost weight yet? How much weight have you lost? Yeah, How good are you feeling? How much did you sleep? But people again become obsessed because if somebody in that circle that they've asked has had an amazing journey and you're not getting the results, again, you start to get defeated. What am I doing wrong? It's not working for me. It's not for me. So instead of comparing yourself with what others have achieved, just focus on your own journey because everybody is unique. Every body is unique. Yeah. Everybody's journey will therefore be different. And there's no point focusing on what other people do. Only focus on yourself and being comfortable and getting all the amazing benefits. Absolutely. So that's your top nine. It is. And the good news is a lot of those, we've had chats about them, we've done audios and videos around each of those different areas. Mm. So if anybody listening or watching is interested, um, they can probably dig into the, the archives. Mm. And you know, whether, it's, whether it's Pink Himalayan, Himalayan Salt, whether it's Sleep or any of those, there's a full episode that breaks that down into a lot more detail. But this top nine is a nice little ready reckoner for people to say, am I making any of these mistakes? Hmm. What do I need to look at? And then their keto lifestyle journey will be a lot more effective. Exactly right. So if you're not getting the results that mm. you deserve, and you do deserve the results, mm. then have a look at these nine and see if you've fallen into one of those traps. Absolutely.